All right, so I was going to start my bulldozer for the first time in a few months, and it wouldn't start. So let me explain the process on how to diagnose that. So since I haven't used it in a while, I was first kind of thinking, oh, maybe the battery died just sitting there. So the first thing I did was just hook jumper cables up to it, and that didn't do anything. Jumper cables are rated in gauge on how thick the wire is. These are two gauge cables and they carry a lot of current and they can actually start something. Make sure you don't buy cheap jumper cables like eight gauge or six gauge because they just don't carry enough current to start something. So two gauge, one gauge, zero gauge are good cables. I'll put a link in the description for some good jumper cables. So the next thing I did So the next thing I did was check the battery voltage. So you can see 13.2 volts. You know, that's fine. That's a charge of battery. And checking a few different spots. So, you know, I'm sticking the uh, the wire here, on, or the test lead on the actual copper of the wire because it's, it's easy for a connection to get lost. You know, you could have power on this terminal, but no power on this wire. Or you could have power on the terminal, but no power on the actual battery stud. So it's important to check the connection between all those points. So I had power everywhere. So then the next thing I did was check to make sure I'm actually getting power to the starter. This big wire here goes straight to the battery with no connections or anything. So this should have power all the time. You can see with the test light, it's got power. So then the next thing you want to do, here's your start solenoid. That should have power. And it does. Then this little wire here, this is what actually tells the machine to start. And this diagnosing process is the same on almost anything, whether it be a tractor, a lawnmower, or a car. All starters are pretty much like this. They have their big wire from the battery and then a small wire from the ignition switch, which tells it to start. So in this case... I'm going to hold the test light on that small wire and I'm going to push the start button. And there it goes. So I got power from the start wire. So now I know the starting issue is here on the starter itself. So the other thing you want to check, you want to check to make sure the solenoid's actually got a ground. So the way to do that, now you could use a power probe. That's a nicer test light, but I'm just using a regular test light here. But if you hook this side to power, now this is this test for ground. So if I touch it there, my solenoid is grounded. So since I didn't hear anything clicking or anything with this solenoid, I know this is an issue with a bad solenoid. So I'm going to try tapping it with a hammer or something, see if that fixes it, but it probably just needs to be replaced. Now putting, jumping power to this wire here will start the machine probably. But let's see if we can get this solenoid working. All right, so tapping this, may, so I'm holding down the key switch. <laughs> Oh, look at that. Wow, that was easy. Okay, well, that maybe should be replaced, but I guess it was, I just barely touched the thing and it fixed it. Well, that's what I wanted to happen, so. Um, you know, I could go more into the diagnosing process. So say you weren't getting power to this when you hit that start button. Then you'd go back to the start button. You check the ignition switch, you check any issues with any safety switches. You know, that you just pretty much, you know, really a test light like this is great or even better is an actual power probe. You know, it's a, it's a fancier test light. It can test for power, ground, and it can power and ground things while you're using it.